What I'm about to share here mostly speaks for itself, and so I'm going to let it do just that. When speaking of whether or not the General Conference sends money to the National Council of Churches, notice how they respond in a letter back in 1967. Make special note of the last sentence wherein they say, we do not make contributions to their, well, National Council of Churches program. If you read the entire letter, they seem to have no problem meeting with such people, even though the Word of God says we must never associate with these types. In one statement, they say Seventh-day Adventists are not members of the National Council of Churches, but in the very next statement, in the same sentence, in fact, they say, but we are cooperating members in certain areas. And then they move on as if they did or said nothing wrong. But from what I understand, the reason the letter was sent that sparked this response had to do with them funding the National Council of Churches with SDA funds. And as we just saw in the last sentence, they said they don't do this. So, did they lie? Well, notice this. In this letter, it clearly says that the Seventh-day Adventist Church does, in fact, have voting abilities, which means they are members of the NCC, proving they lied on that one count. But did they lie on the second count, too? Well, it also stated that in 1959, and by the way, that's eight years before they were asked about it in the previous letter from 1967, which means it was common knowledge by now in the GC, General Conference. We see they did, in fact, send $6,700 to the NCC. And if you notice, the NCC shows how they hid certain truths in the 1967 letter, wherein they said they had no voting association with the NCC. But the National Council of Churches says, yeah, they had membership voting abilities in some areas and non-voting abilities in other areas, which means the letter sent in 1967 hid the fact that they did have voting membership in some areas. So leaving certain things out is deception. But also notice this letter from 1970 from the NCC, wherein they admit the Seventh-day Adventist Church is a related agency cooperating in various communities, and then they say in the fiscal year 1969, this body, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, contributed $5,950 to the DOM project. And so again, we see they lied about using SDA money to fund projects of the Vatican-inspired National Council of Churches, but it gets worse. Now, yes, some may say it's no big deal that the Seventh-day Adventist Church sends money to the NCC in America, which, of course, the Bible says otherwise. But in the same breath, they will declare they would never do that with the World Council of Churches, or the WCC, where we all know the Pope was elected the leader of it on June 26, 2000, and just a few weeks ago, the Pope moved every so-called Christian denomination on earth, along with the Jews, the Muslims, and the Buddhists, to acknowledge on camera before the entire planet that the One World Church was in fact in power under the leadership of the Pope. And so that being said, was the Seventh-day Adventist ever asked if they were funding the WCC? And if so, how did they respond? Well, notice this letter from the General Conference, Seventh-day Adventist Church, January 5th, 1983. It says, we have no financial relationship with this organization. And of course, they're talking about the WCC. All of the funds that we as a church receive are dispersed entirely through our own denominational channels. We understand them to be contributed on the basis that we shall use them to maintain the various programs operated by our church, including, of course, our various welfare programs. So the brief answer to your inquiry is that we do not contribute any funds to this organization. And again, they're talking about the WCC. Well, besides the fact they just lied about the money being sent to other denominations via the Pope's NCC, notice that in the Adventist Review in 1985, that when speaking of the WCC, they said the Seventh-day Adventist Church does not pay one cent in support of it. And so again, was this true? Or did the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church openly lie once again to hide their connection with the Man of Sin in Rome, wherein they not only have membership with, they send money donated by Seventh-day Adventist Church members. Well, notice this letter from June 13th, 1985, from the SDA Church. It says they, and when they say they, they mean the General Conference, have just informed me that our contributions to the World and National Council of the Churches last year totaled about 
$8,000. This is apparently what it has been running for the last few years. And if you jump down to paragraph three, they even go so far as to admit they believe it to be a benefit to be working with well-placed church persons involved in church and state issues. If you go to this page on my other website, you will see many more claims by everyone from D.W. Hunter, who was the Associate Secretary of the General Conference, to Burt Beach, claiming they have no connection with the NCC or WCCs, years after it was actually revealed that they did in fact have connections with the Pope in those areas. I mean, Burt Beach even gave him a medal. Plus, we now know from the Seventh-day Adventist letterhead, as well as that of the letters from the NCC and WCC, that the Seventh-day Adventist Church has had many connections in both the NCC and WCC for decades. And they have been sending the money the Seventh-day Adventist people give them to the Pope and his cohorts in both the NCC and WCC so that the long-prophesied One World Church has the financial means and the so-called spiritual support to come into existence globally, just as the prophecy predicted it would. And just a few weeks ago, the Pope televised that prophesied event before the eyes of every religious leader on planet Earth. The One World Church is now here, and the Seventh-day Adventist Church was instrumental in its coming into power. Thank you for watching. God bless.